All right, I'm going to hit record. Boom, I might ask you for permission. I'm not sure, but either yep. way, hey, dude, it's good to see you. Um, good to see you. I was going to welcome you to the first episode of the podcast, but I guess uh, we don't really welcome each other as we're doing it together, but welcome to right. the listeners, welcome to the viewers. We don't have a name for the podcast yet, but in the group chat, we're calling it a town hall. So I guess welcome to the first town hall of the Wildcat Strength Training Program. Uh, I'm Jack. I'm Coach Zach. I go with Frank and Langs, and this is the main man, Adam. What's up? Yeah, yeah Coach Adam. Cool, Adam. Uh we're how to phrase it we're, we're experiencing similar things right now we're both in the middle of a heat wave uh you're shirtless i'm in a hoodie i'm in a hoodie <laughs> wave that's because you're in air conditioning i'm in yes. my parents rv and it's like stuffy as fuck but um <laughs> we're both he's in saskatchewan yeah. <laughs> i'm in birmingham alabama it's nuts but like Still the same heat wave. It's like real hot and muggy over here. So yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, we're at uh well, I wish I could do the conversion off the top of my head. I can try real quick. I think we're we're like not bad. We're at like 90 today, but uh it's gotten a little 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 hotter than that recently. But yeah, like you said, I'm in the AC. Uh it's hot. So my wife and daughters have the AC cranked upstairs. I'm downstairs where for some reason it's always way colder. So yeah, it's just Arctic. Yeah. <laughs> Arctic. Uh, and you have a storm rolling in too, I think you said. So if uh, things cut out, I guess, uh, act of the gods on that front. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's just fine, but, uh, uh, yeah, we're good. <laughs> Crazy weather down here in Birmingham. Beautiful. So, um, in theory, everyone listening to this knows at least who we are, or at least the first few people that are going to listen to this know who we are because, uh, they're on the wildcat program they're on the savage strength or they're doing a custom thing or they're doing their thing and uh the idea behind this is just to kind of touch base with them once a week once every couple weeks and answer some questions talk about some things and so at the end of my last check-in message for everybody i asked them hey is there any questions you'd like to have answered or any topics you'd like to hear talked about and the number one most common thing that people want to hear so far is how we got into this style of training, like what drew us to it, how we got into it. And uh, I know how I got into it, but I don't know how you got into it really, to be honest. So I, I would love to ask that question first, I guess, is I know that you've moved and grooved your whole life. You grew up doing martial arts, you got into rugby, but when did your quote unquote training journey begin? And when did it segue into a more Eastern style of training? Yeah. Oh man, that's, that's, that is a really good question. Um, First of all, I think it's funny because uh, part of the reason why I, I, one of my buddies, Zach, you know, is, part, is on my team is because like we have such a similar background and I know he's a rugby player and like and used to martial arts as well. And like, it's like, dude, of course. Um, but anyway, yeah, man, I grew up um, as a martial artist and like it's uh, my dad teaches Tong Sudo, which is like Korean based. It's ba it's like the precursor to Taekwondo, basically. Um and you know it's not like anything super crazy it's you know basic karate as like most kids do you know i actually wasn't really into it when i was a kid it was just something my dad wanted me to do because it was healthy and i'm glad he did you know but um a lot of learned a lot of you know just like eastern based stuff and it wasn't even just karate class it was just growing up around like my father who is like really he has like you know books on samurai and like just korean culture japanese culture chinese culture right my dad by the way completely white guy not like yeah he's not like you know asian or anything uh uh kind of country it's actually really funny uh but like um but yeah i just kind of grew up with like a, learning a lot about this uh kind of uh eastern warrior culture basically and like the um the way of the samurai and like you know my dad would always be like out in our backyard practicing sword right like it, it sounds very larpy but it's you know, uh, my my friends would always be like, what is your dad doing? And I'm like, I don't know. Is that not normal? That's always what he did. <laughs> Y'all's dads not do that. Anyway, it's so I grew So we've always had like, you know, Korean war weapons, like all around, like in our basement and stuff like that. And like all these like weird swords and blades and stuff like that. And um, but not only that, just physical culture. Like when I was a kid, you know, my dad would like have us do uh, push-ups in karate class and teach us like a proper like body weight squat and like guys like by the way like it, it, like if my dad ever 
you know, if my dad is ever listening to this, dad will love you. But, you know, he's not he's not like super in shape or anything, but like just like some basic stuff like that, even just like with like breathing and meditation and like Tai Chi, uh, Qi Gong, stuff like that. I was like very like loosely introduced to a lot of these East, Eastern methods. I was a kid. I never really thought of them. I never was like fascinated by it when I was a kid. I was just a normal kid doing all this stuff. And I was just like, hey, whatever, dad. All right. Uh, and then I just got into sports. Right. And um, but, you know, I grew up uh, always very active, all, like always doing a bunch of sports, football, um, you know, uh, wrestling, uh, football and wrestling were the two main things I did. I did that for years growing up. And um, and, uh, you know, and I, you know, I, once I got out of high, high school, I actually um, or more like my senior year of high school, dabbled in MMA, jujitsu. Oh. Um, just dabbled like I did it for a summer right um, but always you know I was into martial arts right in various forms and uh, after that you know went to college learned about rugby joined the, the rugby team at my college fell in love with it like wish I played it since the day I was born uh, and um, yeah rugby has really been like a main sport uh, that I've been doing for like 11 or 12 years uh, played at a pretty high level um still playing um and yeah freaking love it and uh uh technically professional level it was like a new league that like flopped after a few games but i signed a contract i guess that counts <laughs> like, I, I would i would say it too man I was, yeah yeah i got yeah i got like 75 dollars from gas money so perfect. like i guess like i'm a paid athlete <laughs> I was telling one yeah. of the guys on our rugby club, on the rugby club I play for up here, uh, a lot of the times in rugby, man, in sports as a whole, it's just how you tell the story. Yeah, so, <laughs> that's so true. <laughs> that is so true. Like, yeah, like, I, like, I, yeah, like I've told people like, yeah, I played, I played rugby in college and they're like, no way. College, they think like college football stadiums, thousands of fans. And I'm like, I'm, we played in like cow pastures, man. Like there might've been like five people watching us. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, like I, I have played in like some pretty cool like stages and stuff like that. It doesn't matter. Right. But um, always been into sports, always been into like, just, you know, that that's really what got me into training is like, um, you know, I was lucky enough to have a strength coach in high school. You know, I grew up in a pretty like high income community. So like, you know, our school was like a big school who like, had an actual guy in the gym who was certified to teach the football team how to lift. Right. So that's what got me into that. Um, like as far as like weight room, weight lifting, you know? Um, yeah. And, uh, Oh, you know what? Sorry. I'm all over the place. I actually just recalled back in like third grade, okay. this is a very pivotal point. I totally forget about it, but I remember I was a real skinny kid growing up super weird super dorky like i was not like mr cool i was like really fucking weird and like i got bullied a lot and like got uh, made fun of a lot and i i was just always in my own lane um and then i remember one time someone was like hey adam flex your arm and i was like okay and they're like dude you have no muscle and i was like ah and i looked at my arm and i was like i don't have muscle it was just nothing it was just like a bean like a bean pole and like and I just remember, I was like, okay, well, I guess like push ups. And that summer, I remember like just before bed, I would drop down and do 10 push ups. I was like, okay, well, I need to do this a little bit more regularly if I'm going to get see results. Like, I had that concept of like basic consistency. And like, dude, like I was just like doing push ups like very semi regularly uh, through that summer. And then when I came to fourth grade, I remember flexing in my arm again, just one day and like looking at it, I was like, oh shit. And like, yeah, like, yeah, my arm is bigger. I actually had like muscle there. And I was like, whoa, wait a second. Right. And I had that concept of that. And it really started from like just being a very skinny kid. I was skinny, man. I, I made, I got made fun of for being like real skinny. Right. And I don't work out out of insecurity. It was just like, that's when I learned, I was like, oh, wait a second, I can do something about this. Totally. And I was like, cool, I actually have control over my body and the way I would like it look and feel. And you know what I mean? Uh, but anyway, sports got into training that way. I remember out of high school, like after all that was said and done, I was like, oh, I'm not going to slow down on that. 
Um, I really do like working out. So I kept it going. I knew I had momentum. I knew that like most people after high school stop working out. And I was like, I'm not going to be that person. Um, so I just kind of kept going with it. Right. And, uh, you know, went to college, um, you know, found more of a passion in training. I decided to major in exercise science. Didn't know what I was going to do with it. I was just like, well, I like doing this, right. I'm, I'm a meathead who likes to work out. Might as well get something out of it. But, um, but I, found, I started to find like a lot of passion in it, started getting into fit, uh, personal training and worked at various styles of gyms, uh, you know, kick bar, kickboxing, cardio and like Orange Theory Fitness, CrossFit, like, you know, even just like regular, like, um, you know, regular commercial gyms, stuff like that. And um, I remember one gym, actually, like uh, the part of the personal training was like I had to learn about kettlebells just because they're efficient. Right. So that because the group training, instead of like pulling out all this equipment, like we could just use the kettlebells. Right. Um, so I was, so I had to learn about that. And I was like, wait a second, these things are pretty dang cool. And I started getting like more into kettlebells and then like kind of took it and ran with it. And I was like, yeah, like this is kind of the way I want to train. And I even remember like, uh, uh, you know, um, I'm a, I'm a musician, right? Like I, you know, I, I've actually, I used to tour in a band back, like right out of high school. I was, um, um, you know, I, I was like living in a van for like weeks, four or five weeks at a time. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and even then, like we were working out, like me and a buddy of mine in my, ba in my band were, were big meatheads. And, um, we had like two pairs of dumbbells that we brought with us and we just got real creative. Like we'd be in a parking lot doing like really good workouts with just what we had. And dude, like I got in great shape. Uh, I was actually just started playing rugby around a time. So whenever I'd come back into town, I'd just hop in with practice and I was faster. You know what I mean? I was like, whoa, you know what I mean? Just with two pairs of dumbbells, what are we doing here? It works really well. And that's a really kind of um, where I found my niche. I was like, I really have a thing for training. Like I really have been always like, uh, like kind of a nerd about exercise science and learning about that and being a better athlete and, and stuff like that. And, um, but anyway, fast forward kettlebells. I was like, Oh, cool. Wait a second. Minimalist training. Yeah. I've done this before. Right. Got more into that. Um, and, uh, kept learning about stuff like that. And of course, like with every person who gets into kettlebells, you start to learn about clubs, you know, the steel mace and stuff like that. Um, I'm still navigating my career in fitness at the time. And I'm really getting back into the Eastern um, philosophies of uh, physical culture, right? I'm looking, learning more about that. In fact, I wanted to learn more on yoga. And with yoga, I was like, okay, this is cool. There's benefits to it. But like, I can't help but feel like it just felt very feminine mm -hmm. to me the yoga and, and like a lot of people in the yoga space and i was like there's something missing here that just doesn't feel like i don't relate to it right and i would just do some more research or more like you know quote unquote masculine forms of yoga right like what else is there out there i started learning about persian yoga right i started learning about the steel mace steel mace flow right and i was like this is fucking cool right it's like strength training but it's like for like ancient warriors you know what i mean it's actually like the oldest forms of strength training right i started looking more into that into using the gata you know what i mean into like stone lifting um yeah into like persian clubs right the wooden clubs right and just like learning so much more about that i just pursued that kept learning about it got certified in, in, in Persian yoga and steel mace and all sorts of stuff. And, um, and yeah, and that was also when I was navigating my own journey in like my fitness career, I had some people like, Hey man, I like the way you train. Um, uh, like, can you write like a workout program for me? And I'm like, sure. I've never done that before, but I'll give it a try. And I gave it a try. And it turns out like it worked really well for them. And like, I really enjoyed it. And I was like, this is cool. I looked into online training and I was like, this is also very lucrative and it can help a lot of people. And it's a very flexible career. And I'm like, yeah, I kind of want to do this. Started learning more about it. Started learning more, more about my niche. Who do I help? 
All right. I don't just help everybody. And I started realizing too, the more people I helped, a lot more people started coming to me, especially with like, you know, obviously the rotational shoulder movements that me and you do. I had some more people, some friends of mine come to me like, Hey man, like, does that stuff not hurt your shoulder? I was like, no, not at all. It feels great. And they're like, okay, well, I have some shoulder issues. Do you think I would help? And I'm like, fuck, we'll see. I don't know. Gave it a try. They were good as new. Love it. You know what I mean? And then I had people like, hey, man, swing in that kettlebell. Does that not hurt your back? And I'm like, no, not at all. And they're like, oh, well, I have some back problems. Do you think that would help? I'm like, I don't know. We can see. So they try it and they're good as new. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, I kind of have something here. And then I just started pursuing that niche of just helping people who have like spine and shoulder issues. And I kept getting better at it and just learning and like started seeing awesome results from people here. And I'm like, oh, wow, like I kind of have a thing here, like something I could really help people. And um, yeah, that's what got me to where I am now. Right. So, uh, yeah, you know, and, and, uh, and it really does circle back to martial arts the majority of the people that me and zach coach are martial artists like the majority of people that are on our our uh, our coaching roster uh whether they do they do jujitsu or whatever it is or even if they just have used to do martial arts a lot of these guys have the understanding of the holistic nature of movement in the physical culture in the east um, that comes with martial arts and the training styles of the mace the kettlebell the club were originally made for ancient warriors, ancient martial artists to be strong, limber, pain-free. Um, and yeah. And now that I've done a lot of that same research, I'm like, let's bring that back. And that would help really help people. And, um, and the spirit of the training is also something just so freaking cool. It's really empowering to people. I agree. Uh, I could talk. Yeah, man. Yeah. Zach, Zach knows, but oh, yeah. yeah, Zach, you, you tell me, man, where, where'd you get your start? Oh, so uh, like you said, we have very similar backgrounds, very similar come ups in the sense that we started with martial arts, segued into the team sports stuff. Uh, interestingly, my earliest days of having a fitness practice were uh, also like in that third grade, a little earlier range. What and uh, also inspired by father figure in my life at the time, but it was my mom's boyfriend uh, at the time. I'm estranged from my bio father. That's another story, but this guy, he was ex-military. Uh, he was a high school teacher. So he was all about just trying to teach me as much as he possibly could. So I was doing, like, I could read before kindergarten. I was doing long division um, before grade one. Like he was very, yes, really? oh, but here's, here's the kicker to it. He would, oh, utilize, he would utilize fitness as a way to like make me learn shit in the sense that if I got something wrong, I would have to exercise or whatever. So uh, because he came from this military background, uh, he had this idea of fitness being utilized as punishment. So uh, I remember it would be like if I wouldn't get sent to my room, I wouldn't get timeouts. I would have to do pushups. Or you know what's funny there? Let me stop you there, man. It's so funny. My dad, who was like in the army, uh, and like was is like a retired police officer. Like he used to be a drill sergeant in the police academy. Like. He sounds like a hard ass. He kind of is. He's actually the goofiest person you'll ever, you'll ever meet. But um, he was the same way in our, in our karate class. Like if, you know, a bunch of kids, it's usually he had like would train kids. If they were goofing off, not listening, he'd be like, all right, five pushups. And he would always do that with us. Right. And that's how that's how I learned, too. That's really funny. And like I've I've learned to appreciate to like in certain uh, in certain what would be the word? fields like when i played football when i play rugby i love that like you drop a ball okay cool let's do 10 push-ups real quick five push-ups real quick whatever yeah, hold so accountable. yeah love that kind of stuff this was like it was it it for a long time after my mom and him broke up it ruined my relationship with fitness for a little while so because it was yeah. that, like uh that negative like and it was very constant in the sense that uh, if I wanted to watch TV, I would have to do 20 push-ups and 20 sit-ups every commercial if I wanted to watch TV. So I didn't watch like a lot of TV. <laughs> or if it yeah. was uh, like when I would practice spelling bees, like for spelling bees in like grade one, grade two, I would have to do a wall sit. And I would have to sit there in the wall sit until I could spell all the words. So sometimes that wall sit, I'd be on the wall for like two minutes. I'd get up, have to shake my legs and I'd get back on it. And I would be on that wall for like an hour, an hour and a half. So yeah, it's it, kind of kind of punishment based, man. Yeah, I don't know about yeah. that. You know, what's it? So for me, uh, and I didn't realize this until like years later when I was talking to my wife about it, and uh, it crossed. It started to cross a line from like this is a good way to teach a kid something 
into the territory where it was like, as a form of abuse, I was having to exercise. Yeah. 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 It was the, and the one that will always stand out to me was he had me, he was decided I was like six years old, seven years old, something like that. He decided he was going to teach me how to spell anthropology, but, yes. but uh, he wasn't going to tell me how to spell it. It was going to be, I'd have to figure it out. So I laid on the ground and he said, all right, do your best. Try to spell anthropology. I spelled it like way wrong, obviously. And he said, no, do one sit up. So I did one sit up. And then he was like, spell anthropology again. So I tried to spell anthropology, fucked it up. He gave me a hint on like one area. And then he goes, okay, do two sit ups. So I do two sit ups. And then every time I screwed up, it would out of sit up, out of sit up, out of sit up, out of sit up. And so I remember being, yeah, like little kid, like sobbing. Cause I, my, like, I could barely move, but still trying to do these sit-ups as I'm spelling the word anthropology. Eventually I could spell it. Eventually I figured yeah. it out and, and I'll never forget it. I'll say that. But uh, yeah, there was definitely times where it crossed the line. And so because of that, once I didn't have that being forced on me, it was like, okay, cool. I don't want to exercise anymore. Like I do not want to work out. I don't want to do another sit-up in my life. But I also had the experience of being like a third grader, fourth grader and having like full abs having lats from having to do like hundreds of jumping jacks at a time and having like relatively big arms from uh, all the pushups that I had to do at the, at that age. Yeah, wow. I had this like, like it's wild to look back at photos because there's this point of like when mom and him are dating and there's this like little Tarzan and then they break up. And then the next year I'm this just chubby little ball because it was like, I'm never doing another push up in my life if I don't have to. And so I didn't and I got chubby and uh you know what that reminds you of zach like do you, do you remember like literally the little tarzan that was like famous yes totally yeah dude like he's like dad bod now totally and I'm yeah so it, 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 it says a lot about like kids and physical fitness and like yeah this, you can't like as a father now man this is something yeah. i thought a lot about because like i've been able to repair my relationship with fitness and what re at first what repaired my relationship with fitness was sports a uh, very similar kind of idea. I, I started to get into uh, football and rugby and uh, I was in my early teen years. I had continued to do martial arts and would, and like my body shape would kind of change, like depending on how committed I was to martial arts at that time, you know, but around 13 was when I, I got into team sports and it was this idea of uh, I, I had to get better, not just for me, but for the people around me that like really helped. And so, oh, that's, yeah, that's so true. Yeah. You really learned that that's the biggest thing for team sports to me is you learn to do things for others. And yeah. I, yeah, I'm never described team sports for that. So I like got into the weight room because of that. I got real strong, real fast, but likely a lot of that coming from having done a lot of training in my like life beforehand wasn't easy or pardon me, it wasn't hard for my body to start putting strength back on. It remembered the patterns, that kind of thing. So I got real good at barbell stuff real fast in high school uh, to the point where when I was, testing for, like we would do a football testing thing at the end of every year going into spring camp and when I was in my freshman year I tested and I tested higher in bench press squat and deadlift than all the seniors did and wow. so I got into the school next year to rumors of steroids <laughs> of course oh right yeah. uh, and it, like, it's funny though because like when I look at the numbers now it's like it wasn't even that impressive compared to like modern lifting standards for high school football athletes it was just that no one had been training in that like it was at kind of the like up here at least it was the beginning of teams training like we were the first football team in our city that had a um like I had our own weight room and had a, a person that like made a program for us everyone like no other football teams up here worked out at the time Dude, so, that's 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 rare down here unless you go to like a 7a high school in like a really like like high-end community like because i remember um i was volunteering uh down here in prattville i'm visiting my parents in prattville alabama like mid middle alabama but um i was going to prattville high school volunteering there and like it was a nightmare there was like 120 athletes in one weight room and one strength coach that they were like lucky just to have and it was a dude like people were just like slinging up power cleans and like oh my god anyway it was yeah and like mo i started to learn that like most schools around alabama which is like a real rural state mo like as most know um they don't like 
they don't have a weight room. Most kids don't even know how to work out. And like, if they do, it's just bicep curls, bench press, and then they hurt their back doing deadlifts, Yeah, you know? Yeah. yeah. And uh, nowadays up here though, it's, it's gotten pretty impressive. Like what some of these high school facilities have uh, like I'm, I live close to one that is technically the sports Academy. And uh, some of the things I see them like utilizing, even just on the field, I'm like, that's a $5,000 piece of equipment. My goodness. Like, God, yeah. <laughs> wild. But uh, yeah, so for me, after I graduated from high school, uh, I immediately chased the rugby dream for a little while, uh, which led to some injuries. So I went and I played semi pro up here, came awesome. back and I played in it was just like some bullshit game. But uh, you're an athlete, you know what it's like sometimes. Oh, yeah. You go into you, especially when you come back from something where it was like a higher level of play, you kind of want to show off a little bit, you know, you want to, totally. you want to flex a little bit. So yeah. I went into this game. I shouldn't have even been in it likely, but I was like, ah, screw it. I'll play like go for it. And I had, it was having a great game. Like one of the best games I'd had in like senior men's at that point in my career and was tearing it up. And I was on this big run. Like I broke the line and was, I had, I ran probably 30, 40 meters before this guy caught me from the corner and uh, he took an angle, but he had such a bad angle and I could see it from a mile away that I was like, oh, perfect. I'm just going to kind of back step just yeah. a second. He's going to run right past me and I'll be set. And that would have worked great had homeboy tried to actually tackle me. But for whatever reason, instead of like coming in for a tackle, he like leapt into the air. And so when I went for the back step, he just like landed on my shoulders and I had all of him and all of me on like an extending leg. And ah. I was falling and seeing my leg go up and thinking hey that's not supposed to be there and, <laughs> God. and there was just pain uh and I tried to play for about 10 more minutes and it didn't work out I was playing hook at the time so I went for like a throw-in and all right. my weight shifted onto that leg and I fell on my face oh and shit was super thankful to have a power lifter for a coach uh that season because he like scooped me up in his arms like a child and like put me down the bench he's like hey you're done I was like hey thank you thank you so much but uh <laughs> That it was the next day. So anyways, that night I'm like, okay, hyperextension, like whatever shit happens. I go drinking, I go hot tub in, you know, standard 19 year old stuff. Uh, 19 up here. The drinking age in Canada is 19. I'll throw that out there. Uh, Guys are lucky, but okay. <laughs> drinking age in Canada is 19. Um, but 21 yes, down here, but like that doesn't stop us. So it's not okay. really much of a difference. But anyway, yeah. Yeah. yeah well, I, uh, I go hot tubbing, which is apparently like a horrible thing to do if you have a torn muscle because uh, of swelling and inflammation and that kind oh, of, Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. So I was like certain going into the hot tub that I had a hyperextension. I got out of the hot tub and I was like, maybe it's a little worse. Cause I like, I went from a little bit of range of motion to literally no range of motion. Like I couldn't move my knee at all. And I realized something was off, but again, I'm 19, I'm dumb. Right. So uh, I don't think go to the hospital. I just go home. Uh, I wake up the next morning to my mom banging on the door and it's a call from my semi-pro coach. And he's letting me know that team Canada had called him and they wanted me to come for a workout. So I was like, Damn, hey. really? Yeah. So I was like, perfect. I'm like, awesome. This is fantastic. I was like, I hyperextended my knee last night. I have some shit to do today. So I can't go to the doctor. I'll go to the doctor tomorrow. I'll let you know like how long I need until I can like do the workout for me. Uh, Cause it was a two stage thing. I had to do a workout and then go to a camp. And, uh, and he was like, yeah, awesome. Call me back tomorrow. So hang around Saturday, go into the hospital Sunday. Doctor's like checking the leg out and he's like doing some tests. He's like pulling on it and stuff. And he goes, it might just be a hyperextension, but you're strong. You're very strong. So I would like to do some tests to see, uh, to make sure. And I was like, yeah, sure, dude, whatever you want. And he said, he's like, what we'll do is we'll put a needle in and ask like, Spoil like if people are squeamish, plug ears. Uh, he goes, What we'll do, put <laughs> God. underneath your kneecap and we'll draw fluid out. And if it comes out tinged pink, you something's torn and you're going to need surgery. If it comes out clear, it's just a hyperextension and you're fine. And I was like, All right, doc, let's do it. So he puts the needle in, he draws the fluid out, and I burst out laughing just because I had no, I had no other way to respond. Like I just, I didn't know what to do. And because when he pulled it out, it didn't come out clear, but it also didn't come out tinged pink. It came out looking like dirty whiskey and there was chunks floating. In it. Oh God. And so, he's no. like, and so he goes, he literally <laughs> goes, he looks at the needle and he looks at me and he's like, you're not playing for team Canada this year. Yeah, He's like, your, your shit's fucked. Yeah. And essentially that. <laughs> oh God. So I was like, okay. Uh, <laughs> Great. 
so yeah, I ended up having a torn meniscus, uh, a very badly torn meniscus, no ACL. And uh, my fibula was wicked bruised. And that was what part of what the discoloration of the fluid was, I guess. I didn't realize that until I walked. So he did the ACL surgery. Uh, I actually ended up getting rushed through the surgery because of that call from Team Canada, which was like wild. Uh, so normally the wait time in Canada for that procedure is six months to a year. And I had it done within 12 weeks uh, because yeah. it got, got ruled a livelihood issue because Canada is considered a protein. Uh, so because of that, I got rushed through the process. Wow. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, I mean, it sucks, but that's awesome. Yeah. I was super grateful, like super grateful. And, uh, interestingly, so I was given an option. Uh, I was given kind of three options for my knee replacement or my partial replacement there. I could have a pin of my hamstring taken off and that would replace my ACL, which is a very common way of doing it. Uh, but I was told I would lose speed and I would lose power. I was told I could have a different tendon removed from my knee and they could put that in as the new ACL, but I would lose some of my lateral movement. I was a very undersized front row player. I was playing prop and hook, loose head prop, very rarely, mostly hook, but loose head prop and hook in rugby union at 215 pounds at a semi-professional level. So it's very undersized, but I made up for it. With That's not unheard of. I've seen, I've seen guys. Especially like at yeah, hook, well, a, a, a hook back. can look. A hook can a lot of times be like a fourth loose forward. You know what I mean? That's how I played. And like that yeah. was in that era is when that was like really starting to be the thing. But there are still a lot of teams where like if you were under 260, you weren't playing front row. So uh, there was a lot of times where there was just like big dudes against me. Like I remember the team Ontario front row. They were uh, uh, 265 on average. And I was just like, this is going to hurt my neck so much. But screw it. Yeah. Like, let's go, big boy. Like I love that kind of stuff. But yeah. I didn't want to lose. Yeah. I didn't want to lose the speed and power that I had. Uh, and I definitely didn't want to lose lateral mobility that I had lateral movement. Cause that's how I made up for being a little bit smaller and open. Yeah. So like you said, it's that fourth loose forward. So uh, yeah. I, I was like, those don't sound like great options. So the third option I was given was they could give me a cadaver ACL, but it would take longer to heal. And I said, fantastic. Let's just do that one. Like if I'm not going to lose, I'm just going to have to like recuperate more. Fine. Let's do it. So that's the one I went with. And uh, when I returned to rugby the next year, is I was nicknamed Franken knee because I had <laughs> a piece of a dead guy in my knee. And then uh, I took I took a bit of time off. I came back to rugby and I shattered my fibula like a few weeks into the season. And uh, they upgraded my nickname from Franken knee to Franken legs. And that's where that comes from. <laughs> but it was when I was recovering from that, that I got into the fitness industry because I had, I had worked out and I had done that sort of thing. But, uh, when I tore my ACL, I slipped into like a really bad depression, uh, especially with having that Canada call. Cause I'd been chasing that dream for so long and then to get it. Oh, yeah. So, uh, I started eating. And once again, my, I went from like a good fit individual to, I completely, stopped working out i just ate for months and i put on a bunch of weight i got up to 270 pounds and nice. it was, was real fluffy and uh then decided i was going to go back to rugby so i got back into movement and i got down to like 245 which i was comfortable with for a time because i was like 245 is a decent size for a hook and a prop i'll play that but then when i broke my leg i realized that there if i did that again if i jumped to like another 60, 70 pounds, I'd be in the 300 pound range. And there's no way my mental could take that. There's no way like my frame would be able to handle that on a rugby pitch without like a significant change in how I play the game, which I don't want to do. And right. like I said, it, would be, it would have been no good for my mental, like let alone the damage it could do to my body, right? So uh, I reached out to my mom <clears throat> who was in the fitness industry and uh, she just opened a fitness facility actually. And I was like, mom, I just, I need help. Like, I can't work out right now. I'm in a boot, but please help me with my eating. And so she like kept me uh, on track, I guess. She kept me consistent with like not being a dickhead when I ate, not using food as a crutch for feeling shitty. And I was able to maintain my weight while I was injured. As soon as my boot got off, <clears throat> I wanted to move. I wanted to do things because I'd been sat on my ass for so long. And uh, I started teaching kids classes for her. That's how I first got into the fitness industry. Her her business was starting to take off. She needed some support. She wanted to add kids classes. She needed some admin stuff. So I started doing that. And that was my first foray into the fitness world. But uh, 
with having the two busted up legs, I realized I hated doing barbell stuff. It just like every barbell movement felt uncomfortable. And so I started looking for alternatives. And that's when I found kettlebell was uh, when I was searching for alternatives. And like you said, it seems like most people who get a kettlebell in their hands for at least a little while eventually stumbles across clubs and stumbles across mace. And uh, I got introduced to it <clears throat> through this company called Agatsu who are very much uh, into the Eastern style of things. And they also do like, they have like a whole jujitsu thing now that they do as well. Like it's, they're, they're real cool people, but that was my first introduction to it. And it was under this idea of uh, practicing movements more that are built around fluidity. Mm -hmm. We want to be fluid and in multiple planes of motion versus just the singular plane. So we did like, we did Brazilian jujitsu. We did capoeira. We went surfing and then where is awesome. Yeah. And then we did uh, this Mason club thing and I immediately fell in love with the mace. I actually didn't really like clubs at first. I'll be honest. I didn't really like clubs at first, uh, yeah. but I really loved mace. And then uh, <clears throat> thanks to social media and seeing how other people were utilizing clubs and other people were utilizing mace. That's when I like really fell deep into it. And uh, the thing that really sparked love for me in these tools was the more flow style or the complex style that gets utilized fairly often in like mace and, and heavy club work and kettlebell work as well. And uh, the connection of these pieces made me realize that something I'd been missing my whole life was forms and katas. I loved katas so much when I was a kid in martial arts and uh, I realized I'd been missing it. And so introducing that back into my movement practice got me training legs again, which was huge as far as recovering from my ACL stuff, recovering from my ankle stuff and <clears throat> utilizing Mason clubs for it. I'd had screwed up shoulders from years of rugby started to heal all my shoulder issues as well. So I was like, man, I, I need an, I need to help people. I need to introduce these tools to people because it helped me so much and I know it'll help other people. So I started teaching and opened a facility and I was doing all that. And then you reached out and we're like, Hey man, I have this opportunity for you to help even more people all over the place. Thanks to the internet interwebs. And I, dove on it because yeah. uh, man, I love to help people too. I love the coaching stuff, but uh, sometimes I struggle with the sales aspect of it or the, or the getting it. Getting yes. And you're so good at that. So man, it's been, been a wonder for me to be able to link up because we've been able to help people all over with these tools. And that is, yeah. that's what I'm here for, man. So I'm so stoked that we've been able to do that. I think, uh, like you said, we've been seeing some wild results already and it all just comes from these tools. Like that's what they're for, man. It's, they're meant to. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. I, man. And I've told you before, like you have been like the best hire that I've, I mean, like I, I have a, a assistant and then like I hired you. So it's not like <laughs> I'm building a team here, but like one, one of the best investments I've made in my business is hiring you. You literally do so many things better than I would, you know what I mean? And, um, and my clients have, you know, all the people on our team man, have been like, just like, dude, Zach's awesome. And, um, so that's one of the main things I look for, man, is like somebody who cares, you know, obviously someone who knows what they're doing and like has the background and experience, but like someone who cares and that's obviously you, man, that's really cool. Um, and also, man, I was, I was meaning to say this more so to you, I'm not trying to brag to anyone else or anything. I actually don't like you know, telling too many people about this, but that's cool that like you had like kind of like a like Canada was talking to you, Team Canada. Um, uh, three weekends ago, I went to a USA Hawks camp. No, oh. uh, yeah. Now the USA Hawks, it, the rugby league, really? right? I've told you, I play rugby league. Yeah. Um, uh, played that professionally. A bit different from rugby union for anyone listening, if they even care of the difference. But, um, yeah, man, I feel like I actually have like a pretty good shot uh usa hawks and in fact i got a call from the usa hawks head coach yesterday nice. and they want me to play in the north versus south all-star game in washington dc that's awesome dude so, uh, dude yeah i'm like i'm still like i want to play for the hawks oh yeah uh, yeah so uh i just think that's so cool man because me and you just have like that same like drive and wick and and belief that like we can really like um do big things with the things that we love to do, you know, awesome. and, and that drive in sports. I really want to show that to other people. I show, I want, I try to teach that to my kids. I tell it to my kids all the time. I'm like, dude, you can do anything you set your mind to. 
that's something that my dad always told me. He was like, you can, well, really my parents, both of them, um, they were always like, you can do anything you set your mind to. My dad actually in karate class, he told kids all the time. He was like, what's the most dangerous weapon in the world? And they would always be like, oh, it's a nuclear bomb. Ah, it's a grenade. It's a rocket launcher. You know what I mean? And he'd be like, you're all wrong. It's a focused mind. Love it. You do anything with a focused mind. And that my dad just like put that into me, man. And um, so I just, I love that me and you like share that with each other. Absolutely. You know? And I think, I think it's important for like the fitness community that we're in, <clears throat> like the, the more uh, niche version, right? Niche version of it. The, may stuff the club stuff even the kettlebell stuff to an extent there are a lot of people that talk about the benefits but not a lot of people that show the benefits so something i've always found is that like we need to lead by great example we need to show people that it's true so not just being like yeah i've coached this jujitsu guy but being like yeah i do jujitsu as well and this is what i've noticed or yeah yeah one of the biggest things was go like i retired from rugby for a little while it didn't stick I it, like it didn't even, <laughs> but one of the reasons I went back full time was because like I was feeling better in my shoulders and I wanted to show people that I'm not just talking about my shoulders feeling better. They actually feel better. You know what I right. mean? Like, I wanted to yeah. have that's and, actually, that's actually something I like was me in the mention. Like, I mean, so I obviously, man, we help a lot of people with like shoulder and spine issues, but I have admittedly been very fortunate with like maintaining a healthy body, but it is absolutely because of the way i trained back when i was playing in uh, college playing rugby in college uh dude i had to like stop playing for a month because like my right shoulder which is like my hitting shoulder dude i was playing open side flanker by the way I, like oh, yeah. like my half of my career i was an open side flanker um i love i love hitting right oh. but like my shit was like hurting and like luckily we had like a break in the season for like a month but like i could not play and I was like, what is wrong with my shoulder? And I actually just did some research. And of course, like I said, I was an exercise physiology nerd, like during the time and really learning a lot about that. And I was like, oh, okay. It's because I do bench press all the time and I don't work my upper back and do like rows and pulling and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, so like I did just some of that and it immediately went away. And I was good as new. And I've been playing rugby for like 11, what, 12 years, maybe. I played football for nine years wrestling for six years you know what i mean like combat and com uh and uh uh hitting sports right uh and my body feels great and like you that's I mean? that's exactly like right. yeah, yeah i'm 31 years old like my shoulders feel great my back feels great my hips my knees like they feel great right now of course anything could happen it's of sports. course of yeah course. of course right but like one thing that me and Zach, for any of the listeners here, one thing that me and Zach are trying to say is that like we intentionally take care of ourselves and in a way that like I would describe it as like a holistic form of strength training. Um, I mean, most of the people that we coach are people like in their like 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, right? Uh, there's one person on our roster, um, uh, you know, he's 76 years old. This is styles of strength training that have been used for like thousands of years in, in some ways um, for – like it's it's good for your joints it's good for your longevity you know what i mean and it keeps you strong and that's one thing that i really want to show people i honestly believe that i can play rugby till like i'm in my mid 40s you yeah. know what i mean like as long as i like i think i'll just stop playing rugby when like i just can't keep up with anyone anymore you know what i mean exactly. yeah like but god willing no freak injury happens which they can right um like I want to show people that you can perform at a high level. I have a bunch of, I have teammates who are like, Oh man, I'm just glad I made it to 30. Now I'm going to retire because I always said that like, my goal is to play until I was 30. And I was like, dude, I'm 31. And I, I am literally in the yeah. best, best shape that I've been in my entire playing career. Yeah. You know? I, I, I had the, a very similar experience uh, in like, so I just had my first game back like this past weekend and there's a moment where I just stopped and I looked at everyone around me and I was like, I'm way more experienced than everyone around me. And I'm in better shape than everyone around me. Yeah. I should probably just keep doing this for a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, like uh, that, that's, that's the thing. Cause like I, I play with these guys around me and like a lot of them are like kind of my age 
um and like i see dudes like hobbling around i'm like hey bro you okay and you know a lot of them know they come up to me because they know like um that like i specialize in like healing people with certain issues and they'll ask me like hey man like what do you do about like when your like shit hurts or whatever like your back or and, like like what is this what's going on with that and i'm like well i mean you know are you doing like do you sit all day and they're like yeah and i'm like do you do any like do you go to the gym and you know they're like no and i'm like okay so start by taking care of yourself man i don't know let's tell you like <laughs> um i mean it's it's actually extraordinary how like simple it is um but like also having an understand like me and you both have like a big understanding in physiology and how the joints move and moving in a full range of motion under like a weighted load and how important that is and um you know core strength you know stuff like that that's just like really important and not just like bench press and barbell curls you know yeah. what i mean exactly. um yeah yeah for sure man for sure well and that was uh <laughs> earlier you mentioned too just like longevity like just being yeah. able to do movement and the practice for a long time uh i know when i started to when i started to near 30 there was a moment where i was like man i've been doing this mason club thing like primarily for a while i wonder if like I wonder if I should switch it up a little bit just for the change. And then I started thinking like, well, why? Like, what is, what is the practice that I'm going to be able to commit to for the longest? Like mm -hmm. consistency is so big, right? What's the practice I'm going to be able to commit to for the longest? So I looked at some of the guys who have been like the top barbell guys in their era. And if they've stayed healthy, it's because they got, they kind of stopped doing what they were doing. You know what I mean? There's a lot of guys like Ronnie Coleman, uh, a lot of guys yeah. like. Who, Ronnie Coleman's a terrible like it's and kids, yeah. unfortunately this is the perfect example of like a guy who chased something to an extreme did really really well at it but now his body's broken and uh it seemed like every story i read about some strong man or power lifter or bodybuilder who was great uh it's all ended really rough and really young or their bodies like betrayed them at some point and then I saw a video from Pratya of some dude who was like 81 swinging like a 20 kilo gata. And I was yeah. like, God damn. <clears throat> that yeah. Damn. Yeah. I, I think I saw the same video actually. <laughs> yeah. A little more sustainable. Uh, and then there's yeah, Paul Terrace Walkowinski has been a huge motivation for me. Uh, I don't know uh -huh. if you know about him, but uh, I saw a video of him once where it was like I had had a mace in my hands for maybe three months at the time. And I was very proud of myself for being able to swing a five kilo mace. Uh, one-handed for like 20 reps at the time because like brand new to it right i was super proud of myself and then i saw a video he posted and it, he was swinging a i want to say it was a 14 kilo or a seven kilo it was a seven kilo but it was so <laughs> smooth and so i read the caption and he was talking about how he was swinging this seven kilo gata for 14 minutes straight because it was his 14th chemo treatment oh wow and I was like holy shit this dude is going through chemo and he's swinging this mace that's heavier than the mace I'm swinging for like 10 times the amount of reps at least. Like that yeah. is wild. And so uh, that's when I really was like, there's, there's something to this. There's a magic in here where I don't know yet, but there's something in this practice that can make it so you can do it for a very long time and you can do yeah. it under a lot of different conditions and it has some sort of healing in it, I'm sure. And yeah. uh, then when I noticed my shoulders weren't lopsided anymore, I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Remember you told me that, yeah, um, yeah, man. I learned that too, like just from like learning more in Persian yoga, and I know you've learned a lot about that too. And yeah. um, and you know w what they refer to Persian yoga is like it's referred to as the art of the immortal warriors, mm -hmm. and that's because like in you know the Zerkane, right, the you know the gym, right the the ritual if you will of like the men who get in a circle and they do the clubs and they do the shena board and the calisthenics and stuff like that you can see videos of these guys like in modern day iran doing it and it's like you got kids you got adult males you got guys in their 50s you got elderly men mm -hmm. and they're all doing it right now sure some are doing heavier than others, but they're all doing these movements and they're healthy and they're strong. And that's why they call it the art of the immortal warrior, because um, it's it gets you strong and, and keeps you limber and it's great for your joints. And this is something I mean, man, the way we train, I've told this to plenty of people like I am. I'm confident this is the way I'm going to be training until I am in my 80s and 90s. I totally agree. You know, I might not be lifting the same weight. 
But if I want my back to be strong so I can pick up my children and my grandchildren and throw them in the air, you know what I mean? Uh, if I want my, my knees, my hips, my shoulders to be uh, healthy, you know, and if I want to live a life full of like virility and longevity and just get and just be capable of living life to the fullest, this is the way. Absolutely. Fully like agree. Jedi. Yeah, this is the way. Um, yeah, this is the way. Um, yeah, dude. Yeah. Man, yeah, I, I fully agree. I fully agree. I uh, when I set goals with these tools, I don't set like I said, short term goals, of course, but I set real long term ones as well. Like mm-hmm. when I'm 80, I still want to be able to swing X mace for X minutes. But uh, I also have a 20 year plan that culminates when I'm 25 or pardon me, 45. So I've already been on the plan for five years and it's going well, but 20 more years to go. And then hopefully I'll hit that goal. But, what are you trying to do? I want to break, excuse me. I want to break Tom Burrow's record with the Indian club endurance swing. He did 107 hours. I want to do 108 hours. Why? I mean, that's awesome. But like, <laughs> that's like masochistic. A little bit. <laughs> God. A little bit if, if, if you guys don't, if for anyone listening, if you guys don't know, Zach swings clubs and maze for absurd lengths of time. What's your record right now, man? Uh, with the Indian clubs, it's 24 hours. And with a five kilo mace, it's 15 hours. 24 hours, 15 hours straight, not stopping. That's well, insane. I, I, I take a five minute bathroom break every six hours. I'll, I'll okay. put out there because people always ask. They're like, what about the bathroom? Five, five minute break every six hours to, uh, to deal with that. And other than that, yeah, just straight through. Uh, the goal this last time had been 24 hours with the mace, but uh, unfortunately, an old cho- an old rugby injury acted up around hour uh, nine or so. For so for about six hours, I was dealing with pain, uh, but decided that was more than enough. Fifteen hours, I was su- still super stoked on. It had beat my best by three hours. So yeah. this upcoming December, I'm going to shoot for eighteen hours with the mace and keep it going from there. Oh man, that dude, that's really awesome. That is not my forte. No, I would like. No. I don't recommend it, anyone. I don't recommend yeah, it. Yeah, it's it's funny because you inspire me to do it kind of in my own way. Where like every winter solstice, uh, it's kind of like my own like ceremony as my own ritual. I will do some sort of mace pattern, oh, right? And it'll be with a mace or with a club, and I'll do it for just like, like okay, like you know, two thousand and twenty three. Like, so I decided to do 2023 reps straight. That's a lot for me. Right. Like it's it's so funny. It's so, it's so funny because mentally, like, I'm not used to that. I'm like a big strength guy. Like if it's more than 10, 15, 20 reps, I hate it, you know? (laughs) And, uh, and I will get going on these patterns and like after, rep 200 i'm like dude why am i doing this i i'm now i have to stick with it now like this sucks i hate it why did i commit to something like this i'm miserable and like once i get past rep 1000 i'm like oh wait a second this yeah yeah i can do this and then it's so cool and that's also what i learned like and i'm sure you've learned a lot too with like the meditative practice of swinging the gata swinging uh clubs right it's like a form of like movement meditation um and i try i really try to seek movements like that um now um and like focus on breathing it's kind of my form of meditation where i can focus on rhythmic breathing you know uh and i've you know i've had experiences where like you know i've seen stuff like hallucinated a little bit but under the influence of certain mushrooms right and um but that w- that is kind of like my practice, right? Totally. I've uh, I've been there as well. That's part of why I keep pushing that time frame is uh, to tr- try and get deeper. You know. Yeah, man. I actually remind. I remember messaging you. I was like, "Hey, man, how did that go?" And you're like, "Kind of fucked me up a little bit." And I was like, "What did you experience?" And you're like, "Honestly, I need to like digest it a bit." And I was like, "Okay, yeah." yeah. I mean, like. Is it just like a mental thing or? Um, man, like the first few, especially like definitely changed how I viewed things and how I thought of things and just like, not just on a physical, but an emotional, uh, spiritual aspect. Cause like you said, uh, when you hit that deepest stage of fatigue, sometimes 
especially if maybe there's another substance involved or two. Uh, yeah. You can see some things, you can experience some things. And for me, the easiest way to, like the this, this quickest way I can explain it, uh, just because we've been at this for a little while, is um, I started to peek through the veil a little bit. Is the only way I can describe it. Where yeah. I started to feel, uh, at first feel presences around me, but like very positive, very like encouraging, very uh, holy is the only way to describe it. Like the, and again, like just to set the scene for everyone, the first one I'm like, I was going for all day. Well, I did like a 10,000 in a set and that took me like six hours and that was like intense. But then I decided to do a sunrise to a sunset. And that's why I chose this, uh, the winter solstice because it was the shortest day of the year. Right. I remember you doing that. Yeah. And so I decided to do that. And I went for, I, I, I advertised, I told people I was going to do nine hours and three minutes because I did my math wrong. And uh, I calculated daylight as nine hours and three minutes, but it actually was only eight hours that day. But I was like, fuck it. I told people nine, I'm going to do nine. So sure. I did nine hours and three minutes. But in that one, uh, so I'm doing that. I'm going through this shit. Uh, and for those that like that don't know, I own a fit, a steel mace specific facility. And at the time we were in a location where I had a massive mural of Hahnemann drawn, a uh, massive mural of Hahnemann. And uh, I hit this wall. Uh, those moments that you're talking about where it feels like you're like, why the fuck am I doing this? I just, I should put it down. This is stupid. Uh, I call those walls. And when I do really long adjourned sets, I find multiple walls. And sometimes they're only for a little while. Sometimes they're a little bit longer and they suck. And I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. In that nine hour one, I hit this one wall <clears throat> that wouldn't let up. Like it just wouldn't let up. And it just sucked and it sucked. And it was like I hadn't even crossed the six hour mark. So I was like, I can't stop. Like I haven't even finished what I've done before. And that's when I started to feel that presence that I was talking about. And, uh, then I kind of started to see things like on my peripherals a little bit. And like the only way I can describe it, it was like, it felt like there was this veil, this like black veil that was like not silk, but not lace. Like you could see images through it, but not well, you know what I mean? And, uh, everything around me was just dark and I could see these images and it was like people, like things watching and encouraging me. And then the mural of Hahnemann was just light. And it's what pulled me through it. And the interesting thing was when I ended that one, I was starting, like I was hitting another one of those walls and similar thing was starting to happen. But the only, I don't know why, but the only thing I can, the only way I can phrase it is like, it felt like, had I needed to go longer in that moment, or if I had anything left in me to go longer, then there would have been a larger manifestation and I could have had a conversation. Like that was the only thought that like I was stuck with me afterwards was if you go further, you can talk to him. And so that's why I was so fucked up mentally for a while. Cause I accomplished the thing, this huge thing, but there was this, like, you're supposed to go longer. Oh, um, like, like you're almost there. I was almost there. And so oh that's why I've kept like, that's another reason I've kept adding more and adding more and adding more is because I want to hit that point because there's like, I want to fail one day and not fail because my shoulder hurts, but fail because everything just stops on me. Uh, like there's a moment in that nine hour one where I had the table set out in front of me that had like snacks and drinks or whatever. I was swinging one handed so I could like drink something or eat something as I was going. And there's a moment where I had to take like five big steps backwards Cause I was like, I'm about to fall and I'll chin myself. If I stand here, I didn't end up falling. I stayed upright, but it, it was when I started to find those moments that the veil really started to get light. So I, uh, I've pushed and I've pushed and I've pushed and <clears throat> I've had other intense experiences that I'll say for other times. Uh, but the interesting thing for me is, um, it lasts a little while after and the longer I go, the longer it's lasted after in the sense that uh, I start to uh, catch things that like a normal person would be like, am I experiencing schizophrenia right now or something? You know what I mean? But uh, me personally, I feel like I've just sacrificed enough that maybe I can see a little bit of here and there, or 
a combination of dehydration and repeated brain injuries of rugby has made me so I'm <laughs> who knows who knows I don't think it's that um... I don't either man I, I think it's a positive uh and yeah man there's well uh... I mean that's I mean that's like uh it's kind of like fasting man now then you know I don't speak from experience I don't know that but it's spiritually like fasting and like sticking to that and just in meditation as well mm-hmm. I mean, this is why people talk about like being stuck on a, in the desert and hallucinating and stuff like that. And like, of course, physiological things are going on, but like to be stuck in such a place where you have no other choice, but to just go inward, you know, like I could see where that would happen. That's incredible, man. I, um, I had an experience and like, granted, I had like a gram or two of mushrooms. Uh, it really was not a lot. Right. I, um, you know, I'm not like a big psychedelics. I mean, I, I advocate for them. I don't, I don't just take massive amounts of them or oh. anything like that, but uh, learned a lot about myself. And I remember one time me and my, uh, my fiance at the time, um, you know, we went to uh, fiance at the time, girlfriend at the time, now my fiance, anyway, my, my wife. And we went camping in North Carolina in the Appalachian mountains and like off in the cut, we were lost civilization. Like you had to go 20 minutes into the woods. My phone wouldn't work, even work and took a little bit. And I had my 10 pound mace. Um, and uh, I was just doing, you know, for me, it's not necessarily doing like a million reps. It's like doing like the utmost focused, intentful, slowed three sixties. And I just, that's what I'm doing. And I'm just staring focused forward. Um, and like things like started really, you know, you get that tunnel vision going on literally. And like, you start seeing like things like move out of the corner of your eye and you're like, Whoa, what was that? And then like, eventually like, you know, I would experience some stuff there, but then too, like I would just sit there hands propped up on the mace, just standing mace on the ground in between my feet. Right. Um, and then the ground started turning into rattlesnakes. Um, not in a scary way though. It wasn't just like, ah! like, I'm like, it's not like that. It's just like, Whoa, that's cool. Um, but I remember like, this was kind of like also my first, you know, when I first started getting into like psychedelics and really just like, uh, um, uh, what's the word, um, um, being an intro, not okay. Yeah. 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 Right. It's like, like mushrooms or not, you know what I mean? Like, I want to learn more about myself. And I remember kind of like talking to like spirit, God, um, I'm like, you know, I want to go deeper and uncover and heal anything that needs to be healed. I just want to be a better person. You know what I mean? I know that means uncovering trauma and I'm willing to do it in this moment. And I remember like all of a sudden it was like a flash of like it's kind of hard to describe it actually it looked almost like if you can imagine the earth's crust and then all of a sudden the layers under the earth's crust of like magma right magma and like molten lava and uh, but like also comparable to like hell and i remember like in this voice in my conscious being like are you sure you're ready for that and i was like oh fuck and it was a very good thing, but it was just like, Hey man, you're, you know, I, I was grew, I grew up very blessed, white, upper-class suburban family, parents still together. I'm super lucky guy, you know? And I, you know, I didn't experience too much growing up that would fuck me up. Like a lot of my friends have had. Right. And, but in that moment, it was just like, there's more than you think, man. Right. And I was like, Oh, Okay. And then like shortly after that, for the for next like few years, I've been going through a big transformation of things being uncovered in my life, things being uncovered of that like needed to be dealt with emotionally on like and and stuff like that. And it's actually been an amazing process and beautiful process and a very painful one. Of course. Um, and it's grown me into like a better man, a better human, a better father, a better husband. And it really, like, I remember it kind of started with that moment right there. Well, and that's one of the things about like a holistic practice, right? Yeah. It, even, if you, even if you try and go into a holistic practice to target one of the things, mm-hmm. it ain't going to target just the one thing. It's going to get you 
every which way you can. Uh, the mace, for example, if you, or man, the program that we run, if you come into the program that we run, just thinking with about your shoulder or just thinking about your body, we're going to get your mind, we're going to get your body and we're going to get your soul, whether you like it or not. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, we rope you in with like the, with the trivial shit. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, man. I've always said that too, is that like, I, uh, obviously like, and you'll see in my marketing, I'm like, ah, I'll get you a buff. You know what I mean? And I'm like, you know, like you'll lose weight and like, and stuff like that, make your dick bigger. I don't know. <laughs> and then like, uh, but when you get into, if it's one thing people learn, like getting into our program and that we're actually getting more and more better at with our community as well, is that we want this to go deeper. You know what I mean? Like this is, these practices help us become better fathers. Absolutely. better partners better humans you know what i mean be more empathetic be more compassionate right um and and it's because we work on ourselves and like you know you don't know who you are until you have to pick up a weight that you don't want to pick up okay. or you're tired and you know you got to do it anyway right but not only that but also like just facing your own weaknesses and facing your own fears. And we do this through a physical practice, you know, um, and the journey still continues. I feel like I'm only scratching the surface, right? Definitely. Um, yeah, man, but you get it. I mean, dude, I feel like you've, you've definitely been farther on that than I am. You know, we're walking a path, man. You know what I mean? Uh, right. and it's, it's not a well-trodden path quite yet, but we're doing what we can to help trailblaze it and get people on it because, this path has led us to amazing places and we know it's yeah. going to lead many people to many more amazing places. And my goodness, am I grateful to be a guide on that trail, but yeah. Man. And you know, I, uh, it's funny you say guide. Um, I agree, you know, absolutely me and you absolutely. But man, I always like cringe when people like come to me in that way. And mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm like who guide I'm trying to, I'm fumbling, bumbling through life oh. myself. What kind of guide? Do you, I'm not trying to be someone's guide. But like, at the same time, I simply feel called to help people where I feel like I can help. And in that way, you and I, I mean, dude, you know, it as a coach, like people like look up to us and like, and I'm like, and you just, you fall into places of leadership mm -hmm. where you're called. And okay. like, I'm grateful for that. Um, I've had someone I've, we, we had, we had a, we had a client before, I think it was actually before you were, uh, you were on the team, but um uh, it was a younger kid maybe like 18 19 years old and he called me his like sensei <laughs> i was wow. like i was like i mean i guess i don't know man you know how it is just oh. like you know i don't want to be called the king i don't want to be called someone no, yeah don't call me master that's a huge <laughs> yeah <laughs> don't Oh, oh. Yeah. like when people like when people yeah they're like all right master i'm like no 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 like don't call me no, that don't say master. Oh, yeah, yeah. i'm doing? still trying to get over people calling me sir sometimes because yeah. now yeah. i'm like i'm in my 30s so yes. <laughs> fair <laughs> fair man dude, we need to we need to talk more on this i would love yes. to let's let's keep going but totally. i got like another like 35 minutes like let's answer some of these some people's questions um, yeah man so <clears throat> i actually i think through our our rambling and our talking we probably answered a fair few of them especially since we started to get into the little bit of the holistic stuff but yeah. uh something i was thinking that we could do here as a way of like wrapping it up a little bit just because we are crossed over that hour mark right now is uh if you had if you have just like as a coach and you've coached live and you've coached online, you've coached tub, uh, have you come out or do you have sayings that you use frequently? Like, you know, every once in a while you just like, it's a, it's a good catch all things. You just throw it out there. Uh, the one that I'm going to use today, one, cause I think that it applies to our people a lot. I use this a ton in my practice to say probably at least once a session. <clears throat> and that is, Hey, smooth is superior to speed. Control is the goal. Mm. Smooth the spirit of speed controls the goal. I'll just say that sometimes, you know, let people think what they will on it. So do you have anything like that that you just, hey, here's a thing that I just want to throw out there for people to think about? Yeah. Um, well, first of all, what first comes to mind, you say, I love how you say smooth is the spirit of speed. That's a way cooler way of like what my old rugby coach actually used to tell me um, is slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Yeah. Yeah. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast, right? Awesome. Um, that's a great way to put it. I don't know, but some other stuff I always catch myself saying is, um, 
it all starts with you. Mm. I feel like I have this conversation with a lot of, a lot of our people, a lot of times. Um, and this really goes into like the deeper meaning of what we do. It's not just healing shoulder pain, spine pain, anything like that. Um, it starts with you. I've had people, uh, I've talked to some people recently who they're lost in life. Um, a few of them even like have joined our program because they just feel lost in life. I've been there. I've definitely been there. Depressed, lost, don't know what I'm doing. Um, and I tell them the same thing. I'm like, brother, it starts with you. It starts with you showing up for you. It starts with doing your workout. Why are you doing your workout? It's not just to get strong. It's also to like work on you, to better yourself, to build discipline, to build resiliency, to build confidence, to like the person that you see in the mirror, um, to have a better relationship with you. And you can only do that, you know, you know iron sharpens iron. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? You, you only do that by testing yourself. Uh, this is specifically goes in a lot of like men's work as well. Cause I think a lot of men will work this way and think this way, but like, you have to have purpose. You have to have something that tests you. You have to have something that sharpens you and challenges you and kicks your ass and makes you want to show up every day and do it. And whenever someone is lost in life and especially just doesn't feel like working out, I have to remind them. It's like, man, this is deeper than what you think, because once you, this man, man, I've seen this happen with a lot of people is that they invest in themselves, right? You know, our, our program, it ain't cheap, right? They, they put money down and they buy in and they're down for it. They invest in themselves. Sure. They commit to a program that's hard. No way around it. You got to do, you got to do hard shit. Okay. Um, and what happens is next thing you know, their, their relationships improve. Mm -hmm. Their career improves. They start making more money. Their happiness improves. Their quality of life improves. Why? Because it starts with you. Starts and with when you actually, for once in your life, invest in yourself, nice. everything in your life blossoms. Totally. Dude, totally. I, like, I would not be where I am if it wasn't for my physical practice. Okay. And I am just trying to teach that to other people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, really yeah, nice. man. It's like I said, it's like, <clears throat> hey man, sign up for the body, but we're gonna get you mind and soul either way. Like, yeah, I love, I love that. I love that. Like I said, man, like, uh, and I've actually learned this through like business and marketing and stuff like that. Is that you want your marketing to be shallow, and and then you want your delivery to be deep, right? So marketing is like, like I said, like, hey, I'll get you buff six pack abs i'll make your dick bigger or something like that right but like that's just to hook them in and get them in we're going to give them all that and more absolutely absolutely like yes uh man i love it i love it it begins with you it begins with you and then uh just we'll wrap it just to give some people some uh little bang for your buck you know if you came here for just raw information what is uh how, what's how do we phrase it What's one nutritional tip that you would get to someone trying to hit a, maybe a bit of a higher protein diet than they're used to? Oh yeah. Like if they're tired of eating steaks and stuff. Let's say they're tired of eating steaks and stuff. Let's say, uh, they've found a few things that work, but they're tired of those things that work and they want to mix it up a little bit. What are some things they can do to maybe get a little boost here and there? Well, um, a little <laughs> boost here and there, you know, like drink a protein shake. Right. I mean, um, I, I always, I always say that you should focus on whole foods. That's the right. best way to do it. But yeah, it's okay. You you want to get a protein shake and you know, make sure it's like minimal like bullshit in it and stuff. And uh, but I want I I I would actually challenge that question. Mm -hmm. That's really what I want to say to that because here's the thing: I've coached plenty of people with like nutrition for years now, and the thing is that I've seen the patterns of people who have their nutrition in order and like their body composition and their health in order. And I've seen the patterns of people who don't people who have good health and their weights, not just up and down and all over the place. They eat like the same five to 10 things, totally. you know? Yeah. And here's the thing, like, it's not sexy, but like it's simple and it's effective. And the thing is that when you're eating basically the same stuff, you have far more control over your diet. And whenever you want to just go out to eat and just 
you eat whatever you want, you can. Because, like, who cares? 90% of the time, you're eating really well. Okay. Right? Well, I guess there's a there's a reason that the whole chicken and brown rice has become such a cliche. It's because yeah. it works for people, and they will consistently use what works. Fully. Right. But but here's the thing. Uh, what, what people need to do, I always tell them, like, find the top three favorite sources of protein that you love. For me, it's steak. Dude, uh, like this is insane. I've been eating like two steaks a day. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. Uh, and it's funny, actually, I'll eat two steaks a day and then like fruit. And then like at the end of the day, um, like sometimes I'll eat like a pint of ice cream. Yes. Yeah, totally. I'm the same way. Uh, yeah, like, it, yeah. I, um, I'm a big fan as well of, uh, I like to like bulk buy chicken breast. Like I can right. go to, like a bulk store and buy like a box of chicken breast for like, 40 bucks Canadian, like 30 bucks US. And it's good yeah. for like a few weeks of just, you know, cook, rock the chicken. I like shrimp as well, uh, especially because yeah. of protein. Um, but if I were to be like, hey, <clears throat> if you feel like you're nailing stuff, you just can't eat anymore. You don't want to use shakes. Get a low fat cheese, as weird as that is. Yeah. yeah, man. Like, so I have this, I get this cheese all the time. It's low fat. Um, and what it is, is it breaks down to 90 calories and nine grams of protein for every 30 grams of cheese. Mm. So you just start throwing cheese on your stuff and suddenly you have 10 more grams of protein on it. Throw some cheese on that bitch. Exactly, yeah, you're set. <laughs> just uh, bought a Big Mac, throw some cheese on that bitch. <laughs> so the biggest thing though, I guess for, for if we were to summarize both those uh, nutritional tips would be find find what works and own that shit. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's so like it's you have to like simplify and then keep it flexible, right? So like I said, find like those top three, right? Ground beef, fish, chicken, steak, whatever. Work with that, interchange those every now and then. Um, uh, but you get tired of eating that, cool. Yeah, me too, right? Also go for like yogurt. Okay, yes. yogurt. Yogurt is fantastic. Okay, mm. um, you know, try to get like you. Know, yeah, cottage cheese, right? My my uh my fiance actually got me on a cottage cheese. Get like those cottage cheese, like I forgot what they're called, but they're cottage the type of cottage cheese. Yeah. And like put like some berries in there yeah. and it's delicious. Or like just put honey in it. Oh my god, it's so good. Okay. Um uh, yeah, man, do that. Like uh like what's some other for? And like there's so many ways to cook this stuff too. Yes. Right? It's so That's many different crazy. ways. You got get creative with your seasonings right and, and like and like use this as a time to invest in cooking what a life skill totally you know what i mean what a life skill it is to just like learn how to cook and get creative and Absolutely. enjoy it and right? even like getting a getting a kitchen tool that is entertaining to use or you want for some reason can encourage you to like actually cook the thing versus yeah. i'm gonna cook i'm gonna do whatever yeah, uh yeah huge thing for me was like I hated cooking and when I first decided to like really cut weight uh like after I like retired from rugby I decided to just see how lean I could get and I got down to 172 I went from 245 to 172 uh I remember you were like you were real, you know, like, real lean 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 um and for me at first I was like I was supplementing a ton of protein like I was drinking like three shakes a day like it was not good for my body like my gut was having issues and so I decided to buy myself a cast iron pan just to encourage myself to actually cook more. And yeah. it, it worked brilliantly. I suddenly loved cooking. I got a good knife and a good pan. And I was like, fuck yeah, let's do the thing. Like, it's awesome. Yeah, man. Like that's such an important life skill. Like take the time to invest in learning how to cook, mm. do it with your wife, your partner, do it with your kids you know what i mean like we always involve our kids uh well not always but like you know whenever they want to learn, learn how to cook yeah come on like you do it too you know it's like such a skill people uh there is a high correlation of people who have like good health and good body composition low fat high muscle uh and people who cook more often at home really? right um but also hey look i get it right like i you know like we run a business here right like i actually kind of hate cooking most of the time just cuz i have like more important things i need to do with my time uh luckily i have a partner who is an amazing cook oh my gosh she's such a good cook um but like sometimes like i just don't have time to do to like cook and stuff so get a blender 
Okay. Get, uh, get some like whey isolate protein. All right. Try to get like, you know, minimal ingredients in it. Right. Make sure it's like grass fed whey and, uh, you know, put in, mix it in with fruit and just like drink that all day. You know, that's, that's the, that's delicious. There's so many different ways to eat a high protein diet, but I'm telling you right now, it's not about getting cute with it. Honestly, like it's sometimes it's just, I wouldn't say boring. I always love what I eat, yeah. you know, but like, uh, yeah, I eat the same handful of things most of the time, you know? Hey, I, I especially love there how you mentioned that, uh, like incorporating your family into it, your wife, mm-hmm. getting the kids involved as well. I think, uh, hey, we've, we've delivered a lot of good information. I think we should wrap it on this one. But mm-hmm. I think, let's throw out a spoiler now. I think next one, we should go as much into fatherhood and fitness as we can. In- oh, in- yeah, dude, that would be, be a big one. You yeah. know, most of our people are fathers. Totally. Yeah. And it's popped up a few different times on like, especially like, we got a perspective of like, you had a very positive fitness influence coming up versus I had a bit of a negative fitness influence coming up, but we were both able to, you know, utilize what we you got as kids to now uh, affect how we do it as parents. So I think yeah. we'll have some interesting perspective on that. And we're both dads doing the fitness thing. So firsthand, yeah, we both, we both had a baby like back to back. You know, yeah, like, I think I think yours is what like a week younger than mine or something yeah. like. Yeah, <laughs> we had we had babies like within one week. It's crazy. Yeah, it's so man. funny, so funny. But yeah, I think yeah, fatherhood and fitness will be the next topic. And uh, on that, thank you, Adam, for chatting with me. It was nice to we don't we work together. We don't get to chat as much as uh, yeah. as I'm sure either of us would like. Just with you doing all the back end stuff, me doing this stuff as well as like the other stuff that I do, and both of us having beautiful families. So uh, I'm super grateful to have this opportunity to sit down and chat with you. Uh, it was awesome getting more information. I can't wait to give this information to our people and have them learn more about us and just pick up some tips and tricks. And I can't wait for our next one to talk fatherhood and fitness. So Dude, this, this is, this is a really fun podcast. We need to keep doing this. It's great. Of course. Yeah. We'll pick it up. Uh, at, just to kind of end it here for those listening, uh, Adam and I aren't quite sure when it'll drop. It'll either be very soon or still soon, but not super soon. And all that's relative because none of you know when we recorded this. So for all you know, I report. <laughs> uh, but we'll call it there next time. Fatherhood and fitness. I'm going to end the recording now. Thank you again, Adam. And thank you listeners. We'll talk to you again soon.